How does a differential gear work? In this video, we look at the structure and function of a differential gear. Differential gears are mainly used in motor vehicles. Why these are used is explained in the following. In cars, the wheels are driven by a motor. However, if the wheels to be driven were rigidly connected by a common shaft, this would cause problems when cornering. This is because the outer drive wheel must travel a greater distance than the inner wheel. However, since both wheels complete the turn within the same time, the outer wheel must rotate faster than the inner wheel. The illustration shows the distance SI to be covered for the inner wheel and the distance SO to be covered for the outer wheel for a 90 degrees turn. As the circumference of a circle is directly proportional to its radius, this also applies to the respective circle sections SO and SI. With respect to the speed of the wheels when driving straight ahead, when turning into a corner, the outer wheel must rotate faster due to the greater distance to be covered, just as the inner wheel must rotate slower due to the smaller distance to be traveled. If the two wheels were connected by a common shaft, the shaft would twist due to the different rotational speeds. Sooner or later, such torsion is balanced out by the wheel slipping. This slipping during cornering not only reduces driving safety, but also leads to heavy tire wear and, in the long run, to shaft damage. For this reason, in the early days, only one of the wheels was driven. The other wheel was freely mounted on the shaft and could rotate at a different speed. However, such a one-sided drive results in the vehicle trying to drive a slight curve. This reduces not only the driving fun, but also the driving safety. A solution had to be found to drive both wheels at the same time while allowing different speeds. This was finally achieved with a so-called differential gear. The illustration shows the differential of a truck. You can see the small pinion and the large bevel gear. The other bevel gears are located inside the housing and are not visible from the outside. The structure and function of a differential is not easy to understand at first glance. The main question is how the gears are arranged in such a way as to allow different speeds. To understand this, it is useful to first understand the steps behind the idea of a differential. The idea is first to split the common drive shaft so that each wheel has its own shaft. This ensures that the shaft does not twist if one of the two wheels later turns faster or slower. We now attach two pins to each of the separate shafts. Between these pins, a freely rotatable rod drives the respective shafts. This ensures that the wheels can be turned to different degrees within certain limits. If one of the wheels is slowed down, the opposite wheel can be moved a little further by the rod. However, the different rotation must not be too strong, as otherwise the rod will slip out of the pins. In order to increase the very limited motion, several pins and rotatable rods can now simply be used so that they can interlock one after the other. As a result, there are no longer any limits to how the wheels can be driven. One wheel can now rotate at completely different speeds and even stand still while the opposite wheel continues to be driven. In principle, such an arrangement is already a fully functional differential. A closer look reveals that in such a differential gear, the slower wheel reduces its speed to the same extent as the opposite faster wheel increases its speed. The speed loss on one side is therefore compensated by an equally large speed gain on the opposite side. Ultimately, this principle is based on nothing other than the conservation of energy. This point will be discussed in more detail later. Such a kinematic behavior of the differential gear, which causes one wheel to turn faster to the same extent as the other wheel slows down, is exactly what is required when cornering. Let's take a closer look at the kinematics of the differential. To do this, we will observe the situation from the perspective of the rotatable rods with which we drive both wheel shafts. In other words, we move in thought with the rotating drive rods. For reasons of clarity, we will only consider one rod that is located between two pins and drives the shafts accordingly. If neither of the two wheels rotates faster or slower than the other, there is at first no relative movement between the two shafts. This will be the case, for example, when driving straight ahead. However, if you enter a right-hand curve, for example, the inner wheel is forced to rotate more slowly. This results in a relative motion which, from the perspective of the rotating drive rod, causes the right-hand shaft to fall back slightly in its position. At the same time, however, this pushes the left-hand wheel forwards. 
In principle, the rotatable drive rod can be regarded as a symmetrical lever, so that the opposite wheel is pushed forward to the same extent as the wheel that is slowing down falls back in position. This kinematic behavior takes place continuously due to the meshing rods, so that one wheel is constantly rotating faster than the other. Of course, you could also argue at this point that when cornering, the inner wheel is not forced to rotate more slowly, but the outer wheel is forced to move faster. In this case, the faster wheel would then push the slower wheel back into position by the lever. However, the effect is the same as before and different speeds result. The change in relative position over time is ultimately equivalent to the change in speed. The loss of speed on one side is therefore compensated by an equally large gain in speed on the other side. The wheel on the inside when cornering will therefore rotate slower to the same extent as the opposite outer wheel will rotate faster. This is exactly what is required when cornering. You can also see very clearly here that the same forces always act on both shafts, regardless of their relative position to each other. After all, this is a symmetrical lever. If a certain force is applied by the drive rod, it is always symmetrically divided between the two shafts, regardless of the relative position. This also applies if there is a relative movement and the drive rod rotates at a constant speed. Even at constant speeds, there is always a balance of forces in principle. Therefore, regardless of whether there is relative motion between the wheels or not, which means whether one wheel rotates slower or faster than the other, the same forces always act on the shafts. This in turn means that regardless of the speed of the wheels, each wheel is always driven with the same torque. So even if one wheel rotates very slowly, it is still driven with the same torque as the opposite fast rotating wheel. So note, the identical torques always act on both shafts due to the symmetrical drive, regardless of whether one wheel rotates faster or slower than the other. Although the torques on the shafts are always the same, they rotate at different speeds, especially when cornering, which means that the power at the wheels is also different in each case. The formula shows the relationship between torque, rotational speed, and the resulting power of a rotating shaft. Since power is directly linked to speed, a reduction in speed means a reduction in power to the same extent. The loss of power due to the reduced speed of one of the two wheels is therefore compensated by a gain of power of the faster rotating wheel. This is based on the aforementioned principle of conservation of energy, as the motor's drive power cannot vanish into thin air. The differential simply transfers the power from one side of the wheel to the other, so to speak. However, this can lead to problems in some driving situations, which we will discuss in more detail later. Let us now get back to our differential, which in principle is fully functional. In the present case, power transmission by pins and bars is not very effective. Therefore they are replaced by gears, more precisely by bevel gears. The bevel gear shown in blue, which revolves around the shafts of the wheels and thus drives them, is also referred to as a spider gear. In vehicles, the spider gear is of course not driven by hand, but by the motor. The spider gear can in turn be driven by a bevel gear. This bevel drive, usually designed as a hypoid gearbox, consists of the drive pinion, shown in yellow, which is connected to the motor, and the orange-colored bevel gear, which ultimately drives the spider gear. The orange bevel gear is also known as the carrier. Note that the pinion shown in yellow and the orange-colored bevel gear ultimately only serve to drive the differential gear and are therefore irrelevant for the actual operating principle. In order to avoid bending stresses in the drive shafts and imbalances at high speeds, not only one spider gear is used in differentials, but another one is mounted on the opposite side. It should also be noted here that this additional spider gear is not relevant for the basic operating principle of the differential, but only serves to prevent one-sided bending stresses and imbalances. The kinematics of the differential in the various driving situations are summarized once again in the following. Let's first look at driving straight ahead. In this case, none of the wheels rotate slower or faster than the other. In this case, the spider gears drive the wheel shafts without any relative movement, which means that the spider gears do not rotate around their own axis of symmetry. In this case, the wheels of the vehicle rotate at the same speed as the carrier. For example, if you enter a right-hand curve, the inner wheel is slowed down by the shorter distance to be covered. 
However, the outer wheel has to turn faster to the same extent, as it has to cover a distance that is longer by the same amount compared to the center line. And this is precisely where the differential gear comes into play, which, as already explained in detail, makes such kinematics possible. In this case, the spider gears begin to rotate around their axis of rotation and now perform relative movements. On the left-hand wheel shaft, the rotation of the spider gears is in the same direction as the rotation of the wheels and thus enables an increase in speed. On the right-hand wheel shaft, on the other hand, the rotation of the spider gears is directed in the opposite direction to the rotation of the wheels and therefore reduces the speed to the same extent. In extreme cases, the inner wheel can even come to a standstill. In this case, the carrier drives the spider gears around the fixed bevel gear of the resting wheel shaft. The outer wheel then rotates twice as fast as the carrier. This can also be understood very quickly using the kinematics of the rotatable drive rod. If we move the pivot point of the rod by the distance s around the fixed right hand wheel, the left hand wheel moves by twice this distance due to the symmetrical lever. The left hand wheel therefore rotates twice as fast as the carrier. The differential gear is actually a special type of a planetary gearbox because it also has rotating axes. In this case, these are the axes of rotation of the spider gears. In this analogy, the spider gears of a differential correspond to the planet gears of a conventional planetary gearbox. In a differential, the spider gears are mounted on a carrier just like the planet gears of a conventional planetary gearbox. The left bevel gear can be thought of as the sun gear, and the right bevel gear can be thought of as the ring gear of the planetary gear. If you lock the carrier firmly in both cases and turn one of the gears, the opposite gear will turn in the opposite direction. As you can see, the kinematics of the two transmission types are also similar. For this reason, we can also use the fundamental equation of planetary gears, the so-called Willis equation, to mathematically describe the relationship between the different speeds as a function of the number of teeth of the gears. The linked video shows the derivation of this equation for planetary gears in detail. We will now apply this equation to the differential gear. The left and right bevel gears each have the same number of teeth. We now use this relationship in the planetary gear equation. We then simplify the equation and can now cancel the number of teeth of the right-hand bevel gear. Finally, we solve this equation for the speed of the carrier and obtain the formula shown. We can now also see mathematically that the speed of the carrier is always equal to the average speed of the left and right wheel. In other words, the speed of the wheels is always symmetrically different from the speed of the carrier. So if one of the wheels rotates faster than the carrier when cornering, the other wheel will rotate slower to the same extent. The great advantage of differential gears is that they distribute the speed and therefore the power to the individual wheels as required when cornering. In certain situations, however, this can also become a problem. For example, when starting off on slippery ground, one wheel may lose traction and slip while the other wheel stays motionless on the ground. In this case, the differential will transfer all power to the slipping wheel, while the resting wheel on the ground receives little or no power. The rotating wheel now turns at twice the speed, while the other wheel remains standing still. In this way, there is hardly any driving force, and if there is, it is only a one-sided force due to the sliding friction of the rotating wheel. Such a case, in which one wheel has less traction than the other and is therefore at risk of slipping, occurs particularly when driving off-road, where the wheels are loaded differently depending on the position of the vehicle. In the worst-case scenario, if one wheel completely loses traction, it receives full power and spins at twice the speed in the air. The opposite wheel, which still has traction, receives no power and can no longer drive the vehicle. In these cases, a differential can be a bit of a problem. For this reason, off-road vehicles in particular are equipped with differential locks. A differential lock rigidly connects the two drive shafts of the wheels with a clutch, thus disabling the differential. Both wheels then receive the same power again. However, as mentioned at the beginning, this causes the drive shaft to twist when cornering. Differential locks should therefore only be activated in exceptional cases. I hope you enjoyed the video and found it helpful. Thanks for watching.